Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Battle of Washington, D.C. Today in Outside, we're taking a look at some of the most epic missions from the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, where we defend the Washington Monument, watch an EMP go off, and then retake the White House after a Russian invasion. This battle spans over three missions, and using a little bit of noclip, we can take a look at them from a different perspective. And immediately when you start the first mission in the Battle of Washington, D.C., of their own accord, you begin inside of a bunker. This bunker, of course, being right under the evac site at the Washington Monument, which, in this mission, your task is to defend it. But before we check out this awesome map, let's go back inside the bunker because there are some things down there that I think are worth pointing out. Which, if we fly through the halls of this bunker ahead of time, we can see all of these soldiers waiting to start their animations. For instance, a Private Luo here, which doesn't seem like he's having too good of a time. And we got another guy over here, a Corporal Davis, waiting to run towards a downed soldier and apply aid, just frozen in place. And there's a lot of examples of this, and I always find this to be pretty cool, to be honest. There's even some guy, like, stuck in the wall, which is really strange. And another one just floating, sitting on absolutely nothing. And of course, at the very end of the tunnel, we have Sergeant Foley, as well as another random named soldier, who passes Corporal Dunn a weapon at the very start. Which, I mean, he's just sitting here getting some R&R, &R, it looks like. You'll notice also there's this, like, floating gun around, and I'm pretty sure that is the weapon that gets passed to Corporal Dunn. Just a Scar H constantly floating in an oval. Really strange. We also have these guys here at the end, just a random soldier carrying another one over his back. And again, it doesn't seem like his animation starts until you hit a trigger somewhere down that way. Now, as far as the actual bunker itself, there are a few cool little hidden rooms, such as this one, which it seems like there is a US soldier that didn't make it, unfortunately. Perhaps he was sitting in the chair watching over the entrance of the bunker when some Russians stormed in. But other than that, there are some, like, actual, like, hidden room, hidden rooms, like this one right here, which is completely empty and has no modeling in it whatsoever. And it has matching rooms over here as well, which don't even have doors to them, which is kind of strange. I'm not sure what the devs were thinking with this one. Perhaps they were going to make these rooms larger, or they just wanted to have these in case they were going to be used, and they just decided not to. But as you can see, they only ended up using this one here on the end. There's also one more hidden room right here at the very beginning as well, and this one's a little bit larger, it has its own kind of unique shape to it. And again, I assume that this was going to be used, but they just ended up not doing it. But as we walk through here, all of these animations start playing, we start seeing the soldiers actually moving. And when we meet up with Sergeant Foley, we get our orders. Our goal is to protect the Washington Monument evac site and try and buy them some time so they can get the civilians and, I imagined, injured soldiers as well out of there. But before we move up, let's use some no clip and take a look at this amazing battlefield from a different perspective. So first of all, we have a rather large map here and what's really cool about it, well, if we head on over to Google Maps, we can see that this is actually a pretty accurate representation of the area. Here in the middle is the Washington Monument, to the north is the White House, to the west is the Lincoln Memorial, and to the east is the Capitol. The building that we're trying to storm from this bunker that's somewhere around here is directly to the north, and that is the Herbert C. Hoover Federal Building. And actually, looking at the pictures here on Google Maps, yeah, that is definitely the building. But more specifically, I suppose, we're pushing into the Department of Commerce. And in fact, there's actually a seal for that right here in the lobby that you walk on past. And our main objective in storming this building is a crow's nest on the fifth floor. But as you can see ahead of time here, there are no enemy soldiers inside of it. And in fact, there's just an invisible man shooting a javelin 
constantly at the Washington Monument. So that's our target building, the first place that we end up going to. But if we look around the lawn, we can see to our west is indeed the Lincoln Memorial. To the north is the White House, and to the east is the Capitol, just like in real life. And I suppose let's start with the Lincoln Memorial. That just feels right. In between it and the Washington Monument is a World War II memorial, which is there in real life as well, and becomes a very important part later on in the mission when we do a gun run in a helicopter. But here ahead of time, the place seems pretty desolate. I mean, really the only remnants of that is a couple trucks just chilling here in the middle. And just behind this World War II memorial is the massive reflecting pool leading up to the Lincoln Memorial. Which, it's really cool to see this in a video game, and they actually did have some water in here, which is cool. Although it's not exactly the most high-definition stuff going on, but hey, for 2009, it's pretty impressive. I mean, just look at that. Wow. And as we make our way towards the Lincoln Memorial, we can see that, unfortunately, Lincoln himself is not sitting in there on his chair like he is in real life. And in fact, all that's here is a really dark room that you don't have collision with. It's pretty unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie, but the rest of the architecture does seem relatively accurate. I mean, the shape of the building is pretty spot on. So, I mean, I gotta give props to the developers for that. I mean, they even like modeled some pathways here and stuff that you definitely cannot see from all the way out there. Kinda crazy. And on our way back towards the map, we also have this little pool of water as well, which it looks like the game is using like the river texture or something because it's constantly flowing, which doesn't really make much sense. And inside the water, it seems like there's oil or something. It's really weird. And adjacent to the World War II Memorial is this building, which will become very important later on as we do a gun run here where there's a bunch of SAM turrets on top of the roof. So keep this in mind for later. But for right now, I do want to point out that it does have a couple rooms here, which is pretty cool. And this is, of course, where enemies will spawn later on that we'll need to take out. And actually... Kind of awesome that you can get them to spawn here ahead of time. Not sure what that's going to do for the mission, but pretty cool. And what's also kind of strange about this is, even though I can spawn the enemies down there, there are no SAM sites on the roof like there will be later on. Definitely a strange little detail. But moving on back towards the Washington Monument, there's a few things to check out before making our way towards the Capitol. And the first is this convoy, which is just constantly going around the block. As you can see, it's made up of mostly Humvees and a few Bradleys as well, and they're just going on down this road and disappearing off into nothingness. They get culled out of existence at the end of this road, and they get re-popped up right on over here in this little, like, alleyway space, where you can see them appear once again and continue their route around the building. And also what's kind of cool is there are random named soldiers inside of these Humvees, too. For instance, we got Private Johnson here, and a Private Smith. Which, although I don't think you would ever notice that playing the game, it's definitely a really cool detail. There's also this Humvee just chilling right here with a minigun on top of it. And right next to it is a spotlight, which is used a lot throughout this battle. And if we go on up to it, we can see the MG42 symbol. And we can actually use it and direct this light in any direction that we wanted to. And also shoot it. Which is crazy to me, man. It's really cool to see how they did this. I'm guessing they used some resources from World at War here for the mounted MG42 and replaced the model, obviously, with a light so they could point it in any direction that they wanted to to have the beam shine exactly where they want it. And I suppose also have the enemy AI use these lights so they can move it and shine it on you for the later part of the battle at the White House. But all right, moving past this, we got to make our way to the Capitol because I really want to see like how much of it is actually here, which from a distance, I mean, it looks pretty well modeled. The top of it kind of looks like a 2D texture from afar, though, in a way. But when you get up close, you can definitely tell it's three dimensional. I mean, the textures aren't fantastic out here, but the modeling, especially for the top part of the building, is pretty damn good. And it seems that the developers put like a huge orb of light on it because I'm pretty sure it's the brightest thing out here on the battlefield. The capital just shining bright in the distance. And last but not least, before we move on into the Herbert Hoover building, we have the White House to check out. Which in front of it, we have a massive oval, which I do believe is there in real life. And it seems like there's some props scattered around, a few tents, a couple jeeps, and some lights as well. 
And as we make our way to the South Lawn, we can find ourselves the White House. Although it is a lot smaller than it normally is. Like later on in the mission, Whiskey Hotel, which we'll get to, this whole scaling changes quite a bit. So it is important to note that even though Whiskey Hotel happening at the White House, which is literally right around the corner from where we start in this mission, well, it's on a completely different map than this one. But here, the White House is fully modeled, which is cool, although, I mean, there's not an interior to any of it, and it has no collision. Oh, there's a barrier under the map, though. Look at that. Still, though, probably one of the coolest set pieces of the map. And although the White House itself doesn't have any collision, there is a lot of collision out here. Like, there's a ton of space that you can walk around, which is awesome. Being able to run through the streets of Washington, D.C. That, that is mid-battle after a Russian invasion. It's pretty awesome, man. As far as the Washington Monument itself, there's a few Bradleys chilling about, a couple main battle tanks just floating a few inches off the ground, and of course some helicopters as well that are supposedly, I imagine, picking up civilians and evacuating them out of the city. And there's also a random barrel just... Okay, that was rude. And there's also a random barrel just sticking out of the monument as well. Kind of strange. Inside of it, there really isn't much going on in here, although still pretty cool to see. It seems to have some damage, but it's still holding on strong. But all right, it's time. Let's get back on the ground and push on into the target building. So right when we enter the building, we're immediately met with some elevators. And this right here is probably one of the most epic scenes, which if you played this mission, you might know that inside of here is normally an Intel laptop. You have to crawl over the dead body of an American soldier that's just constantly being hit by the elevator doors to be able to get it, which, I mean, man, Modern Warfare 2 was really trying to drive home the tragedy of war. And it's honestly a real shame that modern games don't really seem to do this nearly as much. But continuing onward to our left is another little out-of-bounds space, just a dark little hallway that goes off to nothing. And I gotta say, after doing outside on a ton of zombies maps, this reminds me a lot of a zombie spawn location. I mean, it has the same kind of appeal, where just off around the corner, there's nothingness, a little place that zombies could spawn. Although, obviously, this is campaign, so that doesn't happen. But oh my god, White House zombies, wouldn't that have been sick? Washington, D.C., MW2 zombies? Just saying, you know, could have been cool. In the atrium, there's some more out-of-bound space here on the left. There's a big old patio here, which seems to be mostly identical to the one that you normally walk through over here, although this one obviously has some more modeling to it. And moving further into the building, we are met with this little, like, receptionist table, which normally has some enemy soldiers hiding behind it. But something I found that's pretty funny is there's two bathrooms here, right? And if we go through this door, we find ourselves immediately on the other side of the building. So they make absolutely no sense whatsoever. I always love these little, like, dev tricks like this, where they just put a door on a wall and hope that you don't realize that there's absolutely no space for it. And to the left of this, there's another one of these little out-of-bounds locations. This one is quite a bit larger than the other one, and there's also a dead soldier here, which I actually thought was a Russian soldier at first, and that maybe this was like a spawn location for enemies, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. This guy's definitely American. And continuing onward, there is a little door here at the end of the hallway that a Russian soldier will eventually start shooting out of. But if we look ahead of time, we can see there is no one inside of here. It is completely empty. So it seems that it's not until we hit the trigger in this hallway that the guy spawns in and starts doing his animation. Overlord, this is Hunter 2 1 Actual. Proceeding to the mezzanine. Tell the LAV from PCT 1 to hold their fire. Over. Copy that, 2 1. Good hunting. On this second floor, there's a little spawn room here at the end for the enemy AI, just a little dark room for them. And as we continue onward, we can hear some pretty cool voice lines. Be advised, hostiles on the southwest corner of the fifth floor are hammering the evac site. Over. Solid copy, Overlord. We are Oscar Mike to the fifth floor. Out. What we can hear our goal is the fifth floor as there's some enemies built up there. And on our way, we encounter a SAM team, which we can plant some explosives on and blow it up as well. And what's cool about this little area is there's also some guys spawning over here on this balcony, and we could just fly on over, of course, get a different perspective on this situation, and take a look at their little room that they spawn in. 
It seems that if you trigger the next checkpoint without killing them all, they just retreat back to this little corner and sit here, which is kind of funny to see. I'm not sure why they would do that. I mean, surely they wouldn't really interfere with the rest of the mission, but I guess the devs wanted them here for safekeeping. There's also a couple other balconies here that we can hop on just for the fun of it. And there's also like a hole in the wall here as well, which has a little room inside of it and an enemy tactical insertion or, you know, a flare just chilling here on the ground. Kind of cool to see this though. It's, it's a lot bigger than you think it would be. I mean, it's got no business being this large, to be honest with you. There's also a few more of these little like jump out rooms as well. As we can see this one, the guy isn't there ahead of time. But if we go back and we hit the trigger coming up to it, I believe he's going to jump out and start shooting. Yeah, there he is. What a loser. Although he does have a pretty large area here. Oh, it leads to a bathroom. Let me guess. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere, huh? And before we make our way up the stairs, I kind of want to go downstairs instead. It looks like there's a little bit of a continuation of the staircase and around the corner, a chair just chilling on its side. Although, I mean, it, again, is still like a few inches off the ground. And something else that's kind of funny about this staircase is right down here below it is the elevators. So it would not make any sense that right above the elevators is a staircase. But of course, as the player, I'm sure you would never realize that that's the case. I mean, if you somehow put that one together while playing, you're insane. And moving on up the staircase, we make our way to the fifth floor. Overlord, we're on the fifth floor, proceeding to the southwest corner. I got movement. Watch your scepters. Immediately while getting up here, we can see what looks like some out of bounds space, but if we no clip on past it, you'll start to realize very quickly that this actually just leads and wraps back around towards that crow's nest that we're working our way to. We did, however, pass up some very liminal space over here, so let's just check that out real quick. There's a lot of rooms here just added on, and maybe they were thinking about making this area larger, or perhaps having enemies spawn back here. And actually, there might be enemies that spawn back here, I'm not entirely sure. Because there is a lot of space, and it definitely seems like that kind of area. Perhaps it's used when the enemies start storming you later on in the mission. But what is kind of cool is we can come at this mission from the other end and see the enemies running towards you to the crow's nest instead of away from you. And when you go back and hit these triggers, of course, this is what spawns a whole lot of the enemy AI. And you can see that the crow's nest is now filled with enemies, even though Sergeant Foley is just chilling right there in the corner. site at the Washington Monument reports several transports away, but they are still vulnerable. Can you provide support from your position? Over. Roger that. We're sitting on a stockpile of enemy munitions. We'll dig in and burn through their ammo. Out. Ramirez, get on the sniper rifle. Scan from targets to the south of the Washington Monument. All call signs on this net. As you just heard, we are tasked with taking out some enemies that are pounding the Washington Monument with javelins right now. And with the beauty of no clip, of course, we can fly on over and get an up-close look at these guys. Which normally you're meant to snipe, but I'm gonna go ahead and just try and, like, knife them all instead. I bet the developers didn't plan on this one happening. It doesn't seem like they know that you're here. They're kind of just running around in circles and shooting javelins off. They don't seem to get alerted by your presence in any kind of way. But once you take all of them out, immediately some defend symbols start appearing back at this, uh, well, I suppose the crow's nest that you're trying to defend. So I guess let me get back there real quick and help them out. Because as we know in Call of Duty, the friendly AI are extremely ineffective. Although, actually, they're not doing too bad, to be honest. Especially Sergeant Foley, man. He's just wrecking them as they come through the door. And after successfully repelling the first attack, Sergeant Foley tells us to grab some ordnance and start laying down fire on the enemy armor, which is attacking the monument. There's a whole bunch of BTRs out there, as well as some helicopters flying around. But very quickly, the enemy is staging a second attack, and you have to get to the rooftop for evac. Hunter 
2-1, you bought the evac site. Valuable time. Well done. Now get your ass to the roof ASAP. You're in danger of being overrun. Roger that. We're heading to the rooftop. Which if we turn around real quick before going up these stairs, we can see that there is going to be a ton of enemies following up behind us. So it's pretty cool how there's like this actual sense of urgency. If you don't get up there quick enough, there will be a ton of enemies shooting you in the back. And of course, when you reach the rooftop, there's a Black Hawk waiting for you, and Foley tells you to hop on the minigun. We've linked up with the CEOs on the rooftop and are heading out. Interrogator, has the Washington Monument site been evacuated? Over. Negative 2-1, they're still pinned down by infantry and light armor from the World War II Memorial. Doesn't look good from here. Over. Copy, Overlord. We'll do what we can from the air. Out. First wave of civilian transports is away. Reaper 2, proceed with proper stage evacuation. Litter urgent personnel only. Which, I mean, this is just one of the most epic scenes as well. There's a huge buildup of enemies at the World War II Memorial, and of course, you're tasked with gunning them down. And using a little bit of no clip as well, we can get a really cool perspective of the helicopter just gunning down all of the enemies on the main road. But unfortunately, there are some SAM sites, and we do get hit. And this is where all those SAM sites on top of the roof spawn in, and Sergeant Foley tells the pilot to raise up and take them out. And then the helicopter crashes. You fade to a black screen and you wake up with no weapon in your hands. With limited ammunition, you and your squad hold off and fight as waves of enemies come at you. Ramirez, last mag, make it count. Get it, ammo check. That's good. Too many of them. Shot. It's a very simple scene, but it's probably one of the coolest in the MW2 campaign. Three rounds left. And it leads into what is perhaps the most insane plot that Call of Duty has had. Right as you're about to be overrun and gunned down by an enemy helicopter, the game switches over to Task Force 141, where you're as Sergeant Roach in the middle of Russia. It's a very different mission contingency. It's a stealth mission, so the change from what you just experienced to this is enormous. And at the very end of this mission, Captain Price launches a nuclear missile from a Russian sub. And where is the nuke heading? To Washington, D.C. And this leads us to the second mission for the Battle of Washington, D.C., Second Sun. Picking up right where of their own accord left off, you're inside of that same downed helicopter, running low on ammo, getting overrun by the enemy. Sergeant Foley tosses you his last mag. Corporal Dunn gets hit, and an enemy helicopter approaches your position. The screen fades to white once again, and we get to see one of the most epic perspectives of this nuke going off. Like, I can't think of a better way of doing this. You're an astronaut here on the International Space Station seeing a missile flying towards the United States. It's a very tense moment where you're just sitting there hopelessly. You can move the camera around, but you yourself can't move. 
ISS Houston, stand by. We may have a problem here. And you watch this thing explode. Houston, this is ISS Control. Um, any word on It detonates above Washington, D.C., creating a massive blackout. But before moving on with the mission, let's head back to space. In the sky, you can see there's a couple of satellites. The one that you're chilling on is actually pretty small, to be honest with you. And there's a larger one out here as well, which looks a lot more International Space Station-like. But I gotta see, can we make it to the Earth? We are on like a limited time right now. If we look too far towards that, well, towards the nuke that's coming over the horizon, it will start moving and that will trigger the uh, the rest of this cinematic experience. But I think if we just keep looking straight down, we might be okay. I mean, they keep telling me to look further to my right, which I'm not gonna do. I'm actually gonna try and look further to the left as we go down. I mean, we're getting pretty close. We're going to Florida, boys. Oh, come on. I didn't even look at it, dude. All right, so I guess it's kind of impossible to get all the way there because it's definitely it's definitely moving right now. I mean, I'm closer to the Earth right now than the missile is. I don't think we're going to make it. I don't think we're going to make it, guys. Oh, no. Oh. There it is. So all the effects still happen, and there's actually some debris that spawns in front of you even, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and we're still in space. Interesting. Definitely seems like we've glitched out the game. There's a random piece of debris here just floating. The Earth is missing, unfortunately, but it does look like the moon is still up there. Although... The lighting changed, and now the moon is literally just a dark circle. And I'm noticing right now that the skybox that we're in is very box-like. Like, we can even see the little corner over there. Kind of crazy how that is. I suppose you only get to look at, like, this part of the skybox, which looks completely normal. But behind us, it definitely looks a little bit jank. Also, I never even noticed that the moon was in this mission, to be completely honest with you. But I'll tell you what, we're gonna get there, fellas. It does look like some of the lighting is actually coming back here as we get closer to it, which is kind of cool. Very strange, though. I'm not sure why that would be. And it's actually really well detailed. Like, this photo is extremely high definition. I actually kind of wonder whether they, like, took this from NASA or something, because you can see all of the craters very well. I mean, for something that I don't think I ever saw in this mission, it's extremely well detailed. But as we can see, as we get close, the illusion definitely goes away. It's most certainly not a sphere. Flat moon theory, am I right? I mean, how many people can say that they've gone to the moon in Modern Warfare 2? I mean, this is awesome, dude. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as me. But heading on back into the mission... The nuke causes an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, and knocks all of the aircraft out of the sky. And after finding shelter in a nearby building and surviving the initial crash landing of multiple helicopters, our team starts moving on down the streets. But before we continue the mission, let's take a look at this map. 
So first of all, we can see where our helicopter crashed. It's right here at this intersection, just one block away from the building that had all the SAM sites. And it does look like this is the same map that's used for Of Their Own Accord, just with a lot of the area called out. As you can see, there's even some like floating trees where there once was land. The Lincoln Memorial is no longer present. The reflecting pool, it's not here, but the Washington Monument is still standing in the center. And also the Capitol building out there in the distance. The White House isn't here, however, and the Washington Monument is kind of like a low-poly version of what was here before. It's no longer partially destroyed, it's just a single texture all the way up. But let's get to the Capitol. I'm wondering whether it's like the exact same model or if they changed it out for something low-poly. I mean, from here, it honestly kind of looks 2D in a way. So it's kind of cool to see how this is done. There still is like a square of land around it as well. I'm not sure if there's like grid units or something and they just like decided this one grid unit was not going to be deleted, but the Capitol building most certainly is still here, at least mostly. It is missing a couple textures like the roof right here is no longer present and I suppose some of like the side walls as well, but really cool to see man, it definitely is still here, at least the main part of it anyway. There's also still a bunch of buildings floating out in the distance as well even though all of the ground is completely missing. But let's go ahead and fly back on over and take a look at the new parts of the map that now have been called into existence once this mission started. I will say compared to Of Their Own Accord, this is a very small play space. I mean, it really is only like a block that you end up walking to the bunker there at the end of the mission. And it seems like during this mission, there's only a very small part of the tunnel actually here. Around the corner, it goes to absolutely nowhere. Right here in the middle is a building that we will eventually go into and fight some dudes off in an office. And you can see the surrounding area is like maybe like two or three roads and that's about it. It does all seem to have collision though, which is pretty cool. And there's also some models out here, such as like this bus chilling. Let's hop on it, boys. We got to get to power and get some jug, man. There's also some SAM sites here, which is rather unfortunate, as well as a downed 747, which I'm not sure why there would be planes in the sky at this point during a massive battle, but I guess there was. There's some really cool areas around this map, and I really wonder like how much of this is true to life, considering the Of Their Own Accord map is pretty dang accurate. I know this right here is a real building, but I'm not entirely sure about the rest of these. If you guys know anything, let me know down in the comments. But all right, let's get back on the ground here, meet up with our fellow soldiers, and continue through the streets of Washington, D.C. It's now nighttime, it's dark, there's no lighting anywhere since the EMP happened, and there's also no comms. Because of this, it's hard to distinguish between friendly and foe, and you see this immediately when we see a random guy running from a building and Corporal Dunn yells out a call sign. We get our orders to move to Whiskey Hotel, or the White House, where one Colonel Marshall is waiting to assemble the task force to assault the building. And on our way, we have to fight through some offices. And I gotta say, in playing through this area, after having played a ton of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, this really gives you the vibe of High Rise because of all these cubicles. I mean, a lot of these assets were used for that multiplayer map for sure. You even have some of the same little glass offices. They're dead, right? Clear. Room clear. Let's go. But after making our way through, we're met with a monsoon on the other side. Oh, man. We gotta go up there. Somehow in storming this building, the weather has changed dramatically, but we see the Eisenhower building on the other side and our goal is to make it past it to the Whiskey Hotel. And after passing by some deceased soldiers, we find ourselves a Russian BTR team standing on top of their vehicle for some reason, which I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here, but they're easy targets for you and your squad. Inside. What about them? 
and I don't think I ever realized this in playing the game, but you're sitting on top of a parking garage, which actually does have a lower level here, although it's not exactly well modeled at all. Still kind of cool to see that. And there's also this building here, which you can see little like glimpses inside of. Well, it's just a facade, really. And inside, there's just a back wall texture, and that is about it. But moving up past the BTR team, we end up finding some more people, which as the player, it's very obvious that these are Russian soldiers, at least to me. But Sergeant Foley tells us to hold our fire and uh, tosses a flare at them. I will say, even though it's kind of silly playing it again, it does add some tension to the mission, which is really cool. At this point, I mean, Second Sun is not supposed to be a high-octane mission. It's much more of a set piece and slows things down for a bit right before the fight for the White House. But after taking down the enemy, we make our way to the Eisenhower building, and inside, we find the presidential bunker. Whoa, check out the seal on this door. I thought the president's bunker was under the West Wing. No, that's just for tourists. This must be the real thing. Hold her up. Real or not, man, this place is history. I hope they get out in time. But entering the bunker leads us to our third and final mission at the Battle of Washington, D.C., Whiskey Hotel. It starts off right where Second Sun left off, inside of this bunker, spawning us on an entirely new map now, where our main goal is to make it to the White House and retake it after the Russians have fortified it and created a pretty formidable position. And as you just heard, the White House still has power, so our hope is to go there and get in contact with command. And using a little bit of no clip, we can fly on up in the sky and get a different perspective over this battle, which turning around, we can instantly realize that this is a very different map from the last one. However, the Washington Monument is still over there, although it's a lot further away in this map. But there is no Lincoln Memorial here, there's no Capitol building anymore, just the Washington Monument. Although it isn't the low-poly version that was in Second Sun, it is the same one that we saw in Of Their Own Accord, slightly broken, but still standing. There's also a cool little dev trick going on here with the broken bunker part. We can see some god rays shining in through. And if we make our way up to the White House, we'll see some more reused assets from older games. It turns out that these machine gunners, well, first of all, they're not using the gun themselves whatsoever. The gun is working completely automatic. And I don't mean in just, like, automatic fire, I mean, this dude's not holding it. But also, by that prompt, you'll notice it is the M249 saw from COD 4, and in fact, you can even get on it, and it sounds exactly like it. Although, okay, the, the, the model for it just, like, disappeared? And, okay, friendly fire will not be tolerated. Whoops. It wasn't me, man, I swear, it shot by its own. And it literally did, too, didn't it? There's a few of these gunners scattered around, and what's kind of cool as well is when you shoot them, the gun completely disappears from the window, and they just fall to the ground. Their death animation isn't exactly impressive here. And most of this area isn't very well modeled, unfortunately. There is some decent texturing, though. And below us in the Oval Office, well, there's nothing really here. But it is kind of cool to see that some of this exists, and there's even, like, some areas right here where there's no texture for the floor, but you can still walk on it anyway. And I want to check the spotlights. Are they also MG42s? Yeah, they, sh they sure are. In fact, actually, in this, they're not the MG42. They have the model for the M249 saw, but still the little interact symbol is definitely an MG42. And hey, you can even shoot them too. Look at that. And once again, the model just disappears. So reuse assets from World at War as well as COD4 are just chilling up here out of sight that you would never get to see. And we can also fly around the other side of the White House as well, which is relatively well made, although there's definitely some missing textures. And it looks like a whole bunch of Russian tanks just chilling out front. There's even a convoy of them here on the road. Look at that. I mean, it's pretty cool to see this because I don't think you really get much of a look out the side of the building. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you kind of do. But during this part of the mission, you're running through it as fast as possible. 
But there is also enemy intelligence here, so there's that. But all right, back to the ground here. Let's start moving up on this left flank with Sergeant Foley. And one thing I always thought was pretty cool that I didn't actually realize, I think, back in the day, is that shooting those spotlights actually make the enemies less accurate, which is super useful during this part of the campaign, especially if you're playing it in veteran. But as we make it into the West Wing, we can hear a transmission over radio that Hammer Down is in effect. You can hear that the U.S. military is about to level all high-value structures across Washington, D.C., bombing anyone that's still there. And if we deploy green smoke on the rooftop of these structures, they'll hold off that attack, showing that we're still combat effective. And it kind of makes sense that this is the case, actually, because right before this, you could hear over the radio, Broken Arrow, said over and over again. Which, if you're a Zombies fan, that's a secret organization to you, but in real life, it means that your squad is completely overrun and you're no longer combat effective. And as we fight our way towards the roof of the White House, we pass some pretty epic areas, such as this White House press room, which is infamous if you follow American politics. And something about fighting off enemy invaders inside of it is kind of insane. And you can hear over the radio that you have two minutes to get to the rooftop. And there's no, like, timer on the screen or anything like that. Instead, this mission actually just has the timer running in the background. And you can hear over the comms it counting down 90 seconds to a minute to 30 seconds. And if we use a little bit of no clip and ignore this mission, we can see what happens from afar if you don't make it there in time. A bombing run happens on the White House, and it seems like some smoke just pops right in front of the player's camera as well. And if you use God Mode, of course, you survive this, so the game assumes that you're going to be dead here. But it doesn't actually kill any of your allies, like there's plenty of dudes here still out front right where those bombs landed. And inside of the building, there's still enemy as well. It does, however, take out your squad mates. For instance, Sergeant Foley is here on the ground, and we can even take his gun. And Corporal Dunn is here lying next to him too. If we continue with the mission as normal, however, and go up this flight of stairs, the green flare guy will still have his animation. He'll run on up and light his flares, signaling to the bombers to not drop their munitions. But, of course, this gets the game into a soft lock. It doesn't continue. The end screen does not happen. The jets fly over, but none of the audio is triggered. But I will say it is a lot less epic than what happens if you actually play this mission normal. you make your way up to the rooftop, the same animation will play. Private Bummel is still there. But you run up behind him and you grab your own flare as well. And with that is the end of the Battle of Washington, D.C. You can see across the skyline green flares on many different buildings, signaling that the United States military has won, taking back all of those high-value targets after an EMP decimates the Russian Air Force, grounds all of their helicopters, and makes their communications ineffective. And without good communication, an attack like this would be impossible, leaving the United States military the victors. And although it's not apparent, it actually could be the case that this nuclear bomb won the battle for the United States. Because right before it went off, it was not looking too good. Everyone was saying Broken Arrow, everyone was overrun. But now in this confusion after the bomb dropped, we were able to take back all of these high value buildings. But either way, it's an absolutely epic mission. And I think the storytelling here is fantastic. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as me.
If you did, consider leaving a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. And of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. But that is it for me, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to watch more of my content, you can click one of the videos on your screen right now. But if not, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay awesome and peace out.